so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination all right so very good evening to all of you now before i begin with this video which is about revision questions from nuclear chemistry they are going to be very basic so they'll test your basic knowledge they're not very advanced questions but yes some of the questions i'm quite sure you would not be knowing the answer to right they are very simple so just follow with the video and for those of you who are complaining that i'm not making regular videos well unfortunately you know after spending 12 hours in the lab it's it's really difficult to come back and make a video right uh, this is my favorite pastime you can say teaching so whenever i have the time i just come back and make a video right so let's begin this would be good for iit j aspirants and even bar aspirants right the exam is on 10th march so this would be a very good revision video and i will try to make a few videos related to graph theory uh, which might be useful for you in the coming upcoming bar exam all right so the first question is about the penetrating power right so if if alpha beta gamma particles are given to you and they ask you about the penetrating power then the gamma particles have the highest penetrating power followed by your beta particles and then your alpha particles all right so this is the uh, trend right alpha particles are, have the most or the highest penetrating effect right so in case uh, let's say a radioactive element enters your body your, the gamma particles have the tendency to cause the utmost damage right followed by beta particles and then your gamma particles right sorry then your alpha particles so gamma particles have the highest penetrating power and they are the most damaging to our body all right now the next question that we have is which one of them which of the three particles will not be affected by a electric or magnetic field right so among them gamma particles will not be affected because they are neutral right they are neutral they are not charged particles so your gamma particles will not be affected by any magnetic or electric field all right so in presence of any electric and magnetic field your alpha and particle beta particles might deflect but your gamma particles would follow the same trend in which they are going all right then coming uh, to the highest deflection if you place them in a magnetic field then among these three which one will deflect the most so beta particles will deflect the most because they are light in nature right your uh, your alpha particles are basically helium nucleus so they are quite heavy they are charged but they are heavy but in comparison your beta particles are very light so they will undergo the maximum deflection this question was there in iit je exam so this could also be relevant for your bar exam as well so beta particles will go the highest deflection in presence of a magnetic field all right now the next question is about average lifetime all right so uh, in nuclear chemistry you will see questions on you know the the half life because all of you know that uh, your uh, a radioactive decay or nuclear decay is basically first order right so for first order reaction all of you know that t half t half is equal to 0.693 upon lambda right 0.693 upon lambda or 0.693 upon k whatever you would like where k is your rate constant right or lambda is your rate constant but if in the question let's say your t half is given to you and they ask you the average lifetime so this is something which is not very uh, prevalent in your csi net or gate examinations but average lifetime is also a possible question that could be there in your bar exam right so for calculating the lifetime what you need to do there is a very simple relation uh, t half is equal to 0.693 upon tau okay 0.693 uh, sorry not upon tau 0.693 into tau so where, where tau is your average lifetime so tau is basically equal to t half into 0.693 so you'll be given a question like this for example the t half for a particular uh, radioactive element is given to be 1580 years right so the t half for that element is 1580 years what is the average lifetime for the same element so if t half is given to you as 1580 so your average life lifetime will be 1580 upon 0.693 so this will come out to be around 2275 years so this will come out to be around 2275 years so your average lifetime for this nucleus for which t half is 1580 is equal to 2275 so what you did you had a t half value and for calculating the tau value or the average lifetime you just divided that t half value by 0.693 so this is very very simple all right uh, all right so uh, let's uh, let's try and solve this question that what is the anti particle of a positron right or what is the anti particle of electron this could also be a possible question they could give you four options like let's say if they ask you anti particle of electron uh, and they give you options like photon proton neutron 
and a positron so among these four which is the antiparticle so the antiparticle of an electron is a positron right it's just the same particle but with opposite charge so electron has a negative charge but positron has a positive charge similarly an antiparticle of positron will be an electron right positron the, for those of you who don't know about positron it's p o s i t r o n and i have two lectures on nuclear chemistry as well where i have discussed about what is a positron and when is a positron emitted and when, when is a electron emitted right so there are two kinds of d Okay. one is beta minus one is beta plus so please do uh, go ahead and read about those uh, lecture or just go through that lecture i'll give you the link somewhere over here all right all right so the next question is that if you this is a very very good question which is quite possible because it's an application based question let's say you have been given uranium 235 right uh, this is the isotope that is given to you uranium 235 92 and you slowly bombard this uranium uh, element with uh, neutrons right so what will happen whether nuclear fission will happen nuclear fusion will happen uh, you know four processes could be given to you so whenever such uh, whenever uranium 235 is bombarded with slow moving neutrons it will undergo nuclear fission and you should also know the um, the, the basically after the fission what products will be formed so it's a very famous reaction you'll get krypton you'll get radium plus you'll get one more neutron right so this is the process of nuclear fission so please go ahead about and read about the reaction generally the process followed is nuclear fission and i'm telling you the products also one is barium and one is krypton barium and krypton is formed okay and the most and the more after the fission occurs uh, the the stable form once we start with uranium 235 the most stable form that we reach is of lead all right the most stable isotope that we reach is of lead right so once the fission process keeps on occurring occurring the final product or the most stable isotope that we obtain at last is lead right uh, but the first thing that we obtain is barium plus krypton plus one neutron right then it undergoes further decay and fi finally at the end we get the stable isotope of lead okay then uh okay we have discussed this question antiparticle yeah this is a very important question based on mass loss okay so let's say in a in a nuclear reaction uh your mass loss is given to you in atomic uh, atomic mass units in amu right amu atomic mass units let's say uh, in a nuclear reaction um some uh, there is some mass loss occurs and the mass loss is given to you in the units of amu and they ask you what is the energy liberated in mega electron volt mev right so what you have to do is whatever the mass loss has occurred let's say i'll uh, for assumption i'll take right i'll take 0.1 atomic mass units has mass loss has occurred which is a lot right this this much mass loss does not occur it's in uh, very small fractions so let's say 0.1 amu mass loss occurs then what will be the energy liberated in that reaction all you have to do is you have to multiply this mass loss which is 0.1 which is given to you in the question by 931 right so 0.1 into 931 this will give you the answer in mega electron volts so this will be 93.1 mev right so this is the amount of energy which, which will be liberated so whatever the mass loss has occurred you just simply multiply it by 0.1 okay okay then uh, you should know on what factors does the rate of disintegration depends for a nuclear uh, for a nuclear uh, reaction or a nuclear decay process right so let's say what will happen to the rate of dis disintegration vacuum if this is the question they can confuse you with a lot of options they would say the rate of dis disintegration will increase the rate of disintegration will decrease first it will increase then decrease or it will not be affected right so you should know on what factors the rate of disintegration depends and in this case in in presence of vacuum the rate of disintegration is not going to change right similarly since it's a first order reaction the uh, the, the half life the t half uh to be honest should not change with temperature but recently there have been a lot of articles uh, which which state that at very very low temperatures uh, they have seen that the t half for various nucleus in fact changes right which is an astonishing discovery because if that is the case then uh, you know your nuclear decay is not first order which we presume it is right so there's a lot of debate right now going on uh, whether actually uh, the 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 <coughs> the t half actually depends on the temperature or not right so if you are interested there are a lot of articles research articles which have been published which state that the t half at lower temperatures you know, sometimes decreases sometimes increases depending on the nucleus okay 
uh right so this is these are some of the questions and the last question that i would like to discuss which is again a very basic question is uh what is the process followed in a hydrogen bomb and what is the process followed in atomic bomb so so many of you don't know the difference between an atomic bomb and a hydrogen bomb right so in a hydrogen bomb nuclear fusion occurs and when nuclear fusion occurs it is in fact 10 to 100 times more powerful than an atomic bomb right so hiroshima and nagasaki Na, no, sorry nagasaki over there atomic bomb was used right so in atomic bomb nuclear fission occurs fission right nuclear fission occurs whereas in hydrogen bomb nuclear fusion occurs so that's why generally it's considered that hydrogen bombs not generally it's considered it's it's a fact that hydrogen bombs are much more powerful when compared to a atomic bomb all right so in in hydrogen bomb nuclear fusion occurs and in atomic bomb nuclear fission occurs right so these are some of the very basic questions which could be framed from nuclear chemistry uh, do study about isotopes isotones isobars what is the difference among these three uh, things right i will also try and discuss as much as i can and uh, with uh, with a few more questions uh, related uh, to your nuclear chemistry all right so anyway i hope you found this video useful if you did please give this video a big thumbs up and uh, also do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you have already not subscribed right thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video